Jay here from Jay's Decor and Restore. So I'm back in College Station. Uh, my husband and I came to spend the 4th of July week with my daughter. And so we're here to do some repairs again on the condo. As you remember, I did the um, upgrades on, in both bathrooms. And I wanted to work on the kitchen countertops this time. And while uh, the contact paper worked great for the bathrooms, it's really not a good, um, option for the kitchen counter because you know you're cutting you're laying hot things on it so i decided to go ahead and buy a kit where you actually paint um the countertops to look like granite and i'd already painted the ca uh, the cabinets a while back so uh, it's a little uh work in progress so i'm uh, doing the countertops this time and the next time i'll do backsplash and, and then after that i'm going to paint the kitchen so Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to get set up and I'm really excited about this. Hopefully you are too. I wanted to give you a closer look at the kitchen before I start painting the countertops. I've already started prepping the area that I'm going to be painting. And, um, and then here are the cabinets that I mentioned that I worked on before. Here's a look at what they, they look like before I painted them and added the hardware, which I tell you, it just makes them look like new again. So the color that I pick for the countertops I think is going to play off really well with the color of the cabinets. Alright, so I have everything taped. I went ahead and um, removed the caulk from the back because you can see it's now gone. And simply used a uh, box cutter to remove that. It takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of muscle, um, but just really just strip it, cut it out and then strip it off. And so this is what I'm using to redo the countertops. I bought this on Amazon, and I will post the link uh, below. Um, and now what I'm going to do is the instructions state that I need to clean it off with a either SOS or Brillo pad, just simply the pad, no uh, cleaner. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that, um, and then I'm going to start uh, laying down the black primer. So I will get set up. With, uh, with that as soon as I finish cleaning off the counters. The countertop had a couple of large gouges, so I used this plastic wood to fill them in, and then I sanded it down to a smooth surface. Your first step is going to be to take a foam brush and to line in the crease uh, where the back of the countertop and the, the counter meet, doing the same thing with the, the top edge of the counter. Then you take your roller and you start to fill in and you want to make sure that you don't have too much paint. You don't want uh, to cause any dripping. You then roll it over, roll it from the center to the top so that you any drips that you may have missed, you can go ahead and smooth those areas out. At that point, you move on to the, the countertop using long strokes in one direction and uh, fill in the entire countertop. Here's what it looks like completely primed with the black. Now it's really important that you follow the instructions here and wait 24 hours before moving on to the next step. Remember the area with the gouges? Looks like new again. So following the instructions, it requires you to lay the gray first and then the lighter colors afterward. I wasn't too thrilled with the final result. I wanted more gray to appear, so I decided to reverse the instruction slightly. And here I'm using the lighter beige first. You take a clean paper plate and you dab off the excess paint. You don't want too much paint. And then you start just dabbing across uh, small sections of the, of the countertop. After completing your first small section with the first color, the next step is to get a small paintbrush, a skinny paintbrush, and you're going to fill in the crevices using that paintbrush. You want to make sure that you dab off any excess paint. Now I did blend in uh, some of that paint with my finger so it doesn't appear to have just brush strokes. And then you're going to repeat the same process with the next color. Now when you add your next color you want to make sure to add it while the first color is still wet so that way the colors blend well together. I went back to the first counter that I wasn't too thrilled with and added more of the gray and I like it much better. It's coming together really well. 
Be sure to wait the allotted time of 24 hours before going on to the top coat. I'm ready for the final step and that is to seal it with the high gloss top coat using your clean roller that was in the kit and following the same process that you did when you paint it the, with the primer you're going to use your foam brush to first fill in all the areas uh, that you can't get to with the roller. Make sure not to have too much of the, the high gloss because this will appear with drip marks since it is the final top coat. Hey y'all, so I'm back for the final reveal of the countertops. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and just start showing you uh, as we, as I go through here in the kitchen, the various areas that I did. Now, as you can see from the video, it's not hard. It is, it is does take some patience and some time. Um, all, the more you put into it by, you know, the, the, the careful dabbing that I did with the sponges, the final result looks more of that granite, you know, marbled look in there. So, you know, again, it's it takes a little bit of patience, but overall, I think it turned out beautifully. Now, as I mentioned before, I did the cabinets back in like November, and it was always with the intention that I was going to redo the countertops. The next time I'm here, I plan to add some backsplash and repaint the kitchen and then the kitchen will be as if it was new again so i'm super excited how it all ended and we'll see you next time as always cheers to you